One, two, three. Hallelujah! Dang. <laughs> uh, shit. I'm telling you, man, something is happening, man. Uh, something's going on, man. And so I'm just excited about it. Praise God. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. That boy, woo, powerful stuff, man. Power, just amazing power going forth. Amen. Amen. Let's pray before we get into the word. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for blessing us, blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now. In Jesus' name, amen. Church said amen. Praise God. All right. Look at your neighbor and say, get your Bible out. Okay. Yeah, man. It's going to be good stuff going on. Just powerful stuff happening. Amen. Because we have decided not only to follow Jesus. That's one thing. That's like a decision that you need to make. But you need to make a commitment to his word. Amen. Because that's what we have today. And... Yes, Jesus is in our hearts, and we're glad about that, but we have the word to keep us, amen? We have the word to keep us connected and on track with God. Look at your name and say, you're going to have to stay on track. You're going to have opportunities to fall off track, but we're going to stay on track, amen? We're going to make sure we help you do that. All right, I'm going to preach this message tonight entitled, The Works of Jesus. And so... Uh, this Wednesday night is Faith Academy. This is all about building your faith. And faith comes by what? Hearing. hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so, you know, if you ever want a faith booster, just start reading over the Gospels again. You start seeing what Jesus did, and it, it'll just get you excited. And so uh, I'm going to preach tonight the works of Jesus. Let's start out with Matthew chapter 4. We're going to look at Matthew 4:23. In the King James, and we'll look at it also in the Amplified Classic. But um, let's look at this and get ready to get right into it. I like the trusty Bible with my highlights in it. But um, so, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Now, I want to make an emphasis. What was he preaching? It was the gospel of the kingdom. I said to you guys on Sunday that the kingdom of God was already in place before Jesus came to the earth. So we can't change the rules and the system and the way the kingdom works. So Jesus wasn't preaching a new kingdom, right? He was preaching the good news, the gospel of the kingdom and healing. Y'all see that? And he was healing what? All. What's all mean? So all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And so all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now let's look at this in the Amplified Classic. And we want to just get some understanding here. He went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the good news, the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease. Look at your name and say every disease. Every disease. Well, what happens? They say, oh, this is not curable. What, what was on Jesus, what was on his list of uncurable diseases? Did he have a list? Did he have any limitations? Did God the Father give him a, say, oh no, you heal everything but this. You're not going to be. See, there was no limitations there. Healing every disease and every weakness and infirmity weakness and infirmity so i want to touch on that he was healing every weakness and infirmity among the people and so this word infirmity it means a physical weakness or ailment now y'all want to be helped tonight and if you're watching you, you you ought to want to be helped but we have to have expectations as a people. And I think that our expectations get skewed or they get um, 
contaminated through our own life experience or just whatever, I don't know, you know, different things come about and, and people's expectations change. And, but I want mine to be based on the word, amen? I, I want my expectations to be based on the word. How many know Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, amen. today, huh? And forever. And so Hebrews chapter 13 tells us that. So if that's what he says, then now, if he's healing everything then, then what is he doing now? Is it, is, or did something change? Okay, so healing every disease and every weakness and infirmity among the people. Once again, infirmity, a physical weakness or ailment. What happens today in our modern world, even, you know, a lot of times in the church, people have physical weakness or ailments that they just deal with and it becomes a way of life and they just get used to it. And so they, you know, it's just what it is. An ailment is something nagging. But we see here that Jesus healed everything. So then you didn't have to have stage four cancer to be healed. You could have simply had a knee ache. Oh, can I get an amen right there? Come on. You, you didn't have to have a deadly disease. You could have just had a nagging back issue. But he healed everything. Amen. He healed everything. All manner of sickness and all manner of disease. This physical weakness and infirmity. He healed everything. And this makes me think of this scripture that I meditate. I meditate this every day, but Psalm 105, 37. Let's put that up as a quick cross-reference and we'll come back to this text. But Psalm 105, 37, King James. And this is God bringing them out of Egypt. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person. Man. So it sounds like infirmity, right? As we just looked at that definition of infirmity, physical weakness or ailment. Well, when you look back at this, the, the amount of people is estimated around over, you know, three million people. So three million people coming out of slavery, coming out of harsh conditions. But yet he brought them forth also with silver and gold. Come on, how many know they nobody was broke? Th they had plenty of money. Amen. And there was not one feeble person among their tribes. So that means there was nobody feeble. So what does that mean? Everybody was well able. Come on, somebody. Everybody can go up the stairs. Amen. Come on. Every, oh. Now, this was a bunch of disobedient people. I mean, I don't know if you studied that and studied about the children of Israel and, and how they were living in, in Egypt and all that type of stuff, but God brings them out and none of them are broke and none of them are sick. But in our churches today, we got a lot of people that's doing way better than the children of Israel were doing in terms of you're not complaining and belly aching to God, every, uh, praising God one minute and stabbing him in the back the next minute. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I know you're doing better than that. Man, you're doing better than that. But they came out with no ailments. But many today obey God and got many ailments. Now, I believe it's has something to do with our expectation. It has something to do with what we have decided to accept as our normal. Amen. But if you change what you accept as normal, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. What if you thought, I'm not supposed to be sick. That's against my covenant rights and privileges. Wow. Come on, y'all. You... What if you really, what if you said something like that to yourself? Oh, no, no, I'm not, I'm not supposed to be sick. That's against my covenant rights and privileges. I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. Come on. I am grafted in to the royal family of God through the blood of Jesus. Uh, glory to God. If God bought over three million people who were disobedient out of Egypt and none of them had any ailments, then surely, come on somebody, I'm doing way better than them. 
Because they didn't even have the blood of Jesus. I got the blood of Jesus. Amen. Oh. But now, this has to be your expectation. This, this is a little different now. Y'all, you know, I know y'all don't mind me preaching because, you know, I don't really mind if you mind. It doesn't, you know, doesn't affect me. But, you know what I mean? But, but there is greater responsibility that we have as people. And I believe that if we as people start drawing some lines in the sand, there's some things that's going to change. Amen. Come on, somebody. If we decide that, no, 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 that's not my portion. Oh, see, but now we live in a time where uh, people learn to just deal with everything. And then if you start believing too big, then, then OK, yeah, man, that's just too much. Yeah, brother, go ahead and whatever. Or people just defer everything to Jesus and they just say, well, if he wants to heal me, he'll heal me. But what do you want? Uh, I'm, I'm going to show you guys some stuff in the word that's going to challenge you. Because if I just leave it up to him, well, if he want to heal me, I'm just going to be healed anyway. If he just, you know, okay. Well, we're going to look at the word and then we're going to be able to take that word. And then now maybe some of us have to readjust our expectations. Amen. 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 Come on. Some of us may need to readjust our expectations. And so. Now back to uh, Mark, or excuse me, Matthew. So now we saw in that Psalm 105, 37, nobody was sick and nobody was broke. Amen. I mean, oh, that's a good group to be around. How I many of y'all want that just even in the church? What if we just said, we, we picked that for our church? So ain't nobody broke up in there and nobody's sick. Wow. Amen. That, that's powerful. That'd be talk about people saying, what church you go to? <laughs> Amen. Okay, now back to Matthew. Let's Matthew 4, 24. But let's look at that in the NLT. So this is coming off of Jesus going around healing everybody, doing all this type of stuff. But now, uh, yeah, 23, that's fine. We'll go 23, 24. So Jesus traveled throughout the region of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. Next verse. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. He healed every kind. And so every single thing, he healed it. Amen? Every single thing. And so what happened? News about him. Come on. How many of y'all, you think the news will get out? If, if everybody at this church, oh, I might be just... You think the news would get out if everybody in this church was in the million flow? Oh, y'all didn't even catch that. I'm talking about everybody in this church was in the million flow. You think the news would get out if everybody in this church had their youth renewed like the Eagles? Why? You don't think the news would get out? Who? You think you have to twist arms to get people to come to church? And, and what, what happens if you go home to your family members or some or people that don't go to church and you say, oh, yeah. And they say, how was church today? Oh, it was good, man. We just, you know, uh, I just love it over there because everybody's a millionaire and everybody's healthy. So what'd you say? Oh, yeah, at my church, everybody's a millionaire and everybody's healthy. I mean, when nobody even gets the flu over there, they don't get nothing. It's just, I just some type of anointing on the church. Now, should, should, should we believe like that? I'm just thinking, like, how many of y'all would like that? Amen. You know what I'm saying? You would want that. You would want to be in an environment like that. You would want that to be the norm. Amen? Amen. Yeah. You understand that that's how it was when they came up out of Egypt? Mm -hmm. So we don't have over three million people right. in our church. So we're not asking, come on. Surely if God could do it for over 3 million people, oh, he got this congregation covered. I'm just saying, this congregation is covered easily. Amen? But now it's our expectations. And so I just want to help you with the word so maybe you start to change even the way you think. Now, 
Jesus healed them all. So news spread about him, uh, news about him spread as far as Syria and people soon began. Now we're going to get into this teaching tonight. People soon began bringing to him all who were sick and whatever their sickness or disease, or if they were even demon possessed or epileptic or paralyzed, what did he do? He healed them all. Now, now listen, man, we got to get this teaching. He healed them all. But now I want you to pay attention to something. Let's back this up. Let's go back to this 24. So news about him spread as far as Syria. And then what, what's that next part say? And people, who's this? Wait. And so it doesn't say that people started running to him to receive their healing. Does it say that? No. It says, and people soon began bringing to him. Oh, so now we got to look at the actions of the people. People soon began bringing others to him. Well, how many know you got to have some faith if you bring in somebody else? I mean, come on, somebody. You're not just trying to get your healing. You have to have some faith if you are going around. Imagine you going around looking for people. Oh, he, he looked like he got something. Come on. Hey, get in here, man. He, man, she's struggling. Come on, get in here. And you're getting all these people to bring them to Jesus. The people, it didn't say that the people found Jesus themselves. It said people went out and got them. And they got them and they brought them to Jesus. And so people bringing others, those people had to believe. Now, why am I preaching something like this tonight? It's because our faith really matters for someone else. They may not believe yet, but we see here in the Gospels that there was such a belief in others. Others believed in the power of God and the power of healing so much that, man, they were going around just filling up just I don't know what they were driving back then. They wasn't driving. I don't know what they was filling up, but they was getting them there, man. You know what I mean? And it does not say, now, don't get me wrong, salvation is important. But let me help you with this. If it were just about salvation, why are you still here? And you saved. Why didn't you just get to go to heaven right away? Well, because it's more than just salvation. We, in these examples that I'm reading to you tonight, they, they're not talking about salvation. They weren't even bringing, I'm going to show you another one, where they're bringing them to Jesus. Jesus mentioned salvation, but they, the people that were going to get other people, they weren't talking about, let me bring you over here so you can get saved. This was for healing, man. Amen. Because they had such a belief in the healing power that was flowing through Jesus. And so now let's go to Mark. Mark chapter 2. Now, this is important because I think what happened along the way is the church, their expectations changed. So think about this. If you are a believer and you don't believe in healing, then who are you going to tell to go get healed? Or who are you going to even pray over? But a lot of people don't even believe in healing today. So how are you going to go tell somebody else, hey, let me bring you over here so you can get healed? Or, which is we've advanced now, where I'm going to lay hands on you myself. But do you guys understand that healing used to be a core belief in the church? It was a core fundamental belief. Amen. Now, was it for selected people? Like today we have people that it was a God, God heals some and some he don't. But is that a God thing or a man thing? Because I'm going to show you in here where. He didn't pick who he's going to heal. Everybody got healed. Everybody. Boy, there was such a healing anointing flowing. Boy, I'm telling you, man. Whoo. Now, we can go to Jesus today and say, well, what was that all about, Jesus? I'm just saying, you know, you're just healing everybody. 
you know, just bringing everybody to you and they're just getting healed. Some of y'all go say, well, what's going on with me? Oh, can you do that with God? Or, oh, no, no, he's too holy. I'm not telling you. Now, if you do that, you could say, hey, Pastor Troy told me to ask you this. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I'm just bringing the word to you to help you think in a different way and see what these expectation, expectations can be. And so now in Mark, Mark chapter two, I'm going to read down this story. And this is powerful. So, you know, Jesus was just doing some amazing things. But, you know, the main reason he was doing what he was doing, it was for exampleship. He was to he was demonstrating. He wasn't just doing stuff so that he could leave the earth in a blaze of glory. And they say, man, Jesus was here. No, everything he did was to leave an example. And remember, he was preaching the good news of what? The kingdom. How I many know everybody in the kingdom is healed? I mean, there's no sickness in the kingdom. So what he was doing was preaching the kingdom. That's why he even told them to pray. This is how you're supposed to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, that's what Jesus was doing. He was just bringing heaven to the earth. That's why everybody was getting healed no matter what they had. Because that was just normal in the kingdom. Amen. Now, he was demonstrating this in such a way that this was supposed to be the norm, the new norm. The norm before Jesus came was people was struggling. They was uh, exiling um, lepers and doing all, they were just living like that. But he came to establish a new norm. Now, he did all these things, but he never intended for the norm he was establishing to leave when he left. Amen. Amen. And so uh, let's read this here. But I want to I want to help you pay attention to the actions of the people. So not even the ones getting healed. So when Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room even outside the door. Stop right there. You know what would happen if people once again believed that they could go to church and get healed and delivered and just, you know, stuff could like I think that that's changed. Now, now church has become more about entertainment or more about checking a box. But what Jesus Jesus had the healing power flowing so much that the, there was nobody being, you know, forced to go. I said, oh, where is that? Oh, he's over there. Bam, it's on. So much to where it was packed out. No room to get. Can y'all visualize this? Can you visualize this church where somebody comes here and, and they can't even get up the stairs? Oh, come on, man. They can't get up the stairs. They, they try. Oh, man, what's that? Ah. Then we hear some sawing on the roof. <laughs> Boy, that's that's a motivated. Now, let me let me. Am I am I preaching like some fairy tale? Is this some type of children's book or something? Or is this some stories that, you know, this is truth. This stuff really happened, man. And so we need to hear about it. We need to revisit this stuff so that now we can even question ourselves and say, what are my expectations, man? This ain't. Oh, come on. He says that his word shall not return void. But he also says the grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. He also says his word is true from the beginning. Every one of his righteous judgments endures forever. So we know we've got something solid that we're standing on. So this didn't change. Expectations and things like that change through life experience and people, you know, and so now somebody else tells you what you're supposed to expect. You know what I mean? Like they tell you stuff. Oh, uh, brother, you better get in here, man. You're over 50 now, so you know you better, better what? Should I should, what should I expect? But what if your expectations are based on the book? Amen? You so, oh, no, no, I, I can't even, it ain't even possible for me to catch nothing. 
Oh, come on. It's a mindset, though, right? It's a mindset. And so, reading this, soon the house where they were, uh, soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word, what was he doing? Just sticking, you know, just sticking to the, sticking. Man, isn't this something? Jesus was just doing what he told us to do. That's what we're supposed to be doing. You know what we're supposed to be doing at the church? Preaching the word. Amen. We ain't supposed to be doing everything else. We're we supposed to be preaching the word. Amen? And so while he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. Now, hold on. They are carrying this man. So the word got out. Jesus is over there. Yeah, you know, Jesus, yeah. They didn't found out. <laughs> Jesus was right over there in this, you know. And so what are they doing? They carrying this man. Doesn't say this man asked him, can y'all please take me? You know I'm paralyzed. I need to get to Jesus. No, it was some faith. It was some tenacity. It was some man, some wherewithal in these guys. Clearly they had to believe. And so they are carrying this paralyzed man over there. Four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Hold on. Hold on, man. Talk about a recon mission. Talk about some, some tactical gangsters. First of all, how did they get him up on the roof? Yeah, anybody ever thought about that? How did they get him and them up on the roof? And then how did they know where Jesus was? I mean, they, they diagrammed that thing. Oh, he's right there. We about to let him down right. Man. But these are things that, you know, I mean, here we are in our world today. People, they, you know, people don't even pray over themselves anymore. People don't even, you know, the kid got some. They don't lay hands on the kids and say, hey, oh, you got a fever? Let me, in the name of Jesus, I command that fever to leave. They don't do that anymore. Everybody's, if, it, if it's, if they're going to stretch out to do something, what they going to do? Stretch out to get to CVS. Amen. I'm going to get to CVS even if it's raining. Now, if I need to get, oh, I'll get out there. Even if it's midnight, I'm going to get to that hospital. I'm going to get to here. I'm going to get to there. But these guys was not stretching out to get no medication. They were stretching out, willing to go that extra mile to get this man to Jesus. It doesn't even talk about the paralyzed man's faith at all. It's the people who got him. I told you, it's important for us to believe because there are people that don't know how to believe. They, they, they're not going to be able to believe right now. But God can move on your faith. Come on, somebody. God can move because you believe. God can see what you believe and then do it for somebody else because of your faith. But you got to be convinced if you don't, if you think, oh, I don't know if, I don't know if healing is for today. Amen. Until somebody can come to me and tell me that everything Jesus said, he put a specified date on it as to when it should work and when it would no longer work. But he never says that. Amen. <laughs> And so we'll continue here. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith. See that? He didn't, he didn't say he saw the man's condition. Felt uh, compassion for the man. It doesn't say anything like that. He says, seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. Now, they did not bring him there to get saved. 
I'm just showing you what the word is saying. But for Jesus, salvation was more important than healing. Now, I told you, Jesus mentioned salvation. They didn't. So when they went to pick this man up that was on this mat, because if they was just trying to get him there for salvation, they didn't have to pick a paralyzed man. They could have picked somebody that was just a regular old sinner and took them. They weren't interested in his salvation. They were interested in his healing. And so their faith that they had, imagine that you got enough faith in you to pick up somebody that's paralyzed and carry them to a healing meeting. That's, man. Now, the reason this is important to understand in terms of what the people were doing, salvation could happen and nobody would know it. Oh, y'all, come on, somebody. Salvation could happen and nobody would know it. Guess what? That paralyzed man is saved. And everybody's like, oh, praise the Lord. Okay. Even today, we don't even know who's saved for real and who ain't. Think about it. We got so many people that's saying they say we don't know who's saved and who ain't. But I tell you what we would all know is if somebody get up out of a wheelchair. Amen. I'm just saying if somebody get up out of a wheelchair, then there ain't going to be no questions. Ain't going to be no. I don't know if they did that in the privacy of their heart or they were true with God. No, that they got up out that chair. And that's what was important to the people who brought the man to Jesus. Now, what was important to Jesus was salvation. And so here's what he says. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. Now, this is the other uh, revelation here is Jesus gave him something eternal and it was not limited to this life on planet Earth. So he went on and secured his soul for eternity. Next verse. But some of the teachers of the religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, what is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. Come on, y'all. You can't pull nothing over on Jesus. You know what I'm saying? What, what if we had that power today? Well, you look at somebody and you'd be like, oh, oh, really? Oh, so that's what you think of me. Wow. Man, I thought we was tight. I didn't even know it was that bad. Dang. And they didn't even say nothing. They'd be tripping out, huh? Right? Well, Jesus was reading their minds. Just bam, bam. So Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, right? Because nobody knows if it's really happened. Or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Now, he's about to show them the power of the kingdom. Because how many know miracles end all arguments? Amen. Miracles end arguments. Even for the people that get, get healed. You got somebody that's uh, hard-headed, uh, rebellious against God. They don't want to serve God, mess around and get supernaturally healed. And they will all of a sudden become a follower of Jesus because they know that it had to be God that healed them. Amen. And but it's got to be some other people that believe. And so he tells he tells them, you know, which one is easier. And so next verse. And he says, so I will prove to you that the son of man has the authority. See, look at your name, and say authority. See, authority is key. And a lot of people run around wanting to do something, but they don't have the authority, see? And that's why you got to bring your life into alignment with God. You got to have the anointing flowing and the, the anointing flows from the top down so that you would have the authority because the devil knows how to recognize authority. And he knows where you're ranking when you're right with God. He says, so I will prove to you that the son of man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Now, he's going to manifest a healing, but really it's just a, oh, you see, uh -huh, y'all don't know what kind of power I got. So not only is he forgiven, but he's about to get up. And so I will prove to you that the son of man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, 
Stand up, pick up your mat and go home. Wait, how did he get there? This man was carried, carried on a mat, paralyzed, put up on a roof, let down in front of Jesus. Jesus forgives him of his sins. So now he's saved. Then he said, now you're about to be saved and healed. Get up. So stand up and pick up your mat. Why you got to pick up the mat? Because he was identified with the mat. Amen. Everybody, see, because he wasn't just going to be a regular person walking around in the crowd healed. He was going to be walking around with that mat. And everybody's going to say, that's the man that was on that mat. He still got his mat, but he ain't laying on it no more. Amen. Because something changed. Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. Next verse. And the man, what did he do? Jumped up. What? This man jumped up. Amen. And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God. What? Well, see, wait. But it doesn't say they was all believers already. See, this is what I'm saying. This the miracles end arguments. Amen. Amen. The miracles end the disputes. God. They had something happen like that. They praise God, exclaiming, we've never seen anything like this before. Power. Hallelujah. Heaven's power flooding the lives of people. And so if we see that, we look at not the man's faith, does it? This text does never talk about the man's faith, right? This is not an example where Jesus says, do you believe I can do this? He didn't ask that man that. He moved based on this man's friends. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Man, somebody can get healed because they know you. Oh, oh y'all didn't catch that. Oh, yeah. Somebody didn't get healed because they know you. But now I'm talking about, but see, you got to be at the place. Now, let me ask you this. Do you think this paralyzed man's friends doubted whether or not he'd be healed? Because if they doubted, there ain't no way they would have cut a hole in the roof and let him down, disrupted the whole meeting. Amen. Come on. Jesus is up in there having church and they just interrupt church. Surely they knew. Now, what if they had doubted? What if they said, well, I mean, you know, if he chooses to because, you know, he heals some and some he don't. You know, we're going to wait. We're going to try to get you in another way. We're going to have to see if we can catch Jesus around the back. But we ain't not about to tear up no roof. Amen. They had all confidence. Amen. What happens when you're walking around the earth with all confidence? You talking about I know God's healing. Now, I want to tell you what has changed. What has changed is Jesus is not on planet Earth like that. And so we can't take somebody to Jesus. But what has changed is Jesus is in us. Amen. And so the same healing power that was in that house is now in you. Come on, somebody. That same healing power that was in that house is now in your heart. But now the question is, do you believe it just like they believed it? There'll be no reservations. See, God wants us laying hands and we don't think twice. Bam, 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 lay hands. If I ever lay hands on you, I expect you to be healed. I don't even think about you not. Amen. Amen. If, I, if I wasn't thinking that you're going to get healed, what am I, what's the point? Now, I'm not saying I'm the healer. No, the same one that was in the house preaching when it was packed and the people tore up the roof, that's the same one in my heart. And he's the one that says he don't change. Amen. Amen. So that's that's where expectations are, right? Your expectations are such. Now, in the church world, the expectations have changed. Amen. So all now you know, God doesn't do that anymore. Like, when did he come to you and tell you that he's no longer going to do that? Like, did he ever like, can you let do you have any meeting notes or something from that? God, can I get some some minutes, the minutes from that session you had with God? Because he never said that. That's people that said that. That's people because people don't want to believe. And because they've been listening to their auntie and their uh, step 
mama, whoever that grew up in this religious church and they don't have no faith. And so everything changes. So now we're just getting along. Man, and we didn't kind of get, we getting along, but he brings them up out of Egypt. Everybody got money and ain't nobody sick. But now we're in the church, I'm like, we getting along. How you doing today, bro? I'm just, you know, hanging in there. Man, they wasn't hanging in there. We're talking about hanging in there, but now Jesus is in the earth. Now we got, you think them guys that went and got that paralyzed, man, you think they were talking about how you doing today? I'm just hanging in there. <laughs> just hanging in there. Them people just hanging in there ain't doing nothing for God. The, the people that's hanging in there ain't doing nothing for God. They ain't going to church. They're going to work. They're coming home tired. They're sleepy. They ain't got no energy. Come on, somebody. They're catching everything that's going around. And they sure ain't taking nobody else to get no healing. But you see, this is what we're supposed to be believing. Let's look at the faith in the people. Let's go to another one. Mark 6.53. Mark 6, 53 through 56, NLT. So now, you know, in, in Mark's account, you know, the Gospels is just each one's account of, of, of events. But, you know, uh, they had just fed the 5,000, all this type of stuff. They're going across the water in a storm. You know, we have the, in the Gospels where it talks about Peter walked on the water. Well, Mark doesn't really put a lot of emphasis on that. But it's the same story, same setup. So they're, he's sending them on. So they're supposed to go across the sea. After they had crossed the lake. So, you know, the storm happens and they go walk. He goes walking out there and all this stuff happens. But after they finally cross, because at first they didn't recognize him. But after they had crossed the lake, they landed at Gennesaret. They brought the boat to shore and climbed out. Then now the people recognize Jesus at once. So anybody over there, they, rec they already know that's Jesus. Okay, next verse. And they ran. Now, look at this. So now it's on again. Oh, there he is. There's that healer. Amen. There's that healer. And so what happens? And they ran throughout the whole area. Y'all see this? Imagine this. We're talking about, you know, just trying to go on some outreach or something. You know, we just trying to get, you know, we just trying to say, man, we just trying to knock some doors. But this is a little bit more gangster right here. We're talking about, and they ran throughout the whole area carrying sick people on mats. Now it's a thing. Everybody carrying somebody. Carrying sick people on mats to wherever they heard he was. Amen. Dang. Jesus in Compton. Boom. <laughs> Uh, he's in South Central now. Bam. Come on. It just carrying him. At me. Man, imagine this. I wonder how many people believing in this type of stuff anymore. But if Jesus showed up, do you know that if Jesus showed up on Sunday in this church, like just showed up right here next to me. I'm not talking about in a vision or nothing like that. I'm talking about like everybody who got eyes. They said, oh. That's Jesus. <laughs> Do you know how many people would be at church on Wednesday? They'd be canceling, changing schedules, canceling. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. So sorry. That, that uh, whatever commitment I had, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to let that go. Right? So now it's a little bit harder because it's spiritual. And so people got life. And they see life more than they see God. That's right. And we need to flip that. We need to see God more than we see life. Amen. See, Amen. we need right. to change it back. We need to see God more than we see life. Because if they running through the streets, carrying sick people on mats, surely they're not seeing life. They seeing God. And that's driving them. That's motivating them. And so then they ran throughout the whole area carrying sick people on mats to wherever they heard he was. Next verse. Wherever he went in villages, cities, or countrysides, they brought the sick out to the market, uh, yeah, out to the marketplaces. Now look at this. They begged him 
Now, I just back this up real quick. I got I to gotta help you guys see who we're talking about. We're not talking about the people that are sick. We're talking about the ones that went and got them. So that's like, I come over there and get you. I'm going to come on, man. I'm going to take you, man. I'm, and even if you say, I don't feel like going, you going. Because <laughs> some of the people getting carried on the mass, they might have been like, hey, man, where, I never, I ne- wait, what? hold on. I never said, where are we going? Where y'all taking me? Right. Hey, just be quiet, man. We're going. <laughs> motivated, man, motivated. God. And now, they brought the sick out of the marketplaces and then they begged. Who begged? They begged. The one on the mat? No. Y'all getting this tonight. So you mean to tell me you going to now beg God mm-hmm. to let somebody else that got the not You ain't got it. Mm-hmm. You don't have the ailment. See, what I gather out of this story, they, they didn't already receive their healing. I'm just saying. They, uh, see, the one that's been delivered is motivated to help somebody else get delivered. The one that is healed is motivated to help somebody else get healed. The problem where we don't have the motivation is we don't have enough people that say, oh, I got my healing. I'm trying to help you get yours. Shoot, I got my money. I'm trying to help you get yours. But you got a lot of people in the church doing without. Living outside of that. That ain't God's fault. That's expectations. This was supposed to be the norm, the new norm. And so now they begged him. Next verse to let the sick people look at this. They so now they didn't they didn't brought him. They begging Jesus just all we want. Imagine that you get in there, man. You got to be out of breath. You tired. Come on. Hey. Hey, Jesus, hold on. Hey, all we need, come, we don't, this time we don't need you to touch everybody. We just need, can, can we get your permission? Oh, come on. Man, can you share this kind of motivation? Look, so now the, the man on the mat, and so now you're telling them, after you get permission, you say, look, all I need you to do, I'm going to tell you when, you're just going to stretch out. Just give me a little reach. And the man's on the mat, he just like, Ugh. But they had to get permission. They had, they, so they begged Jesus. I'm just begging you to let the sick people at least, that, let the sick people touch at least the fringe of his robe. What a scene. So they ran through the streets carrying people and just grabbing up people, carrying them over there. But then they say something like, now, Jesus, I just, look, I just want, I'm just going to ask you so you don't mind, you know what I mean? Just let these people, you don't even have to look at them. Just let them touch the bottom. Amen. Come on, man. I'm not talking about lay your hands on my shoulder. None of, just let them touch the bottom. Praise God. Now, when you study that out, the bottom is the gathering of the anointing. Amen. That's where it all gathered up. So it's, that's really the most anointed place. And so, and all who touched him were what? Really? All who touched him were healed. Man. And so they were so confident to bring anybody with any kind of problem to Jesus. You see that? How many of y'all think you would be that confident? Amen. Hmm? If, if, come on, if you knew Jesus was like, you know, Jesus was down there at Albertsons, like right now in the parking lot, would you be confident to bring some people? Amen. Oh, no, no, Jesus, woo, I got to get him. Come on, man. You, tonight, it's a, it, it wouldn't matter what time it was. You would, but now you'd be confident in Jesus' ability. So they were so confident to bring anybody with any kind of problem to Jesus. Now, Jesus intended for this kind of supernatural power to continue even after he left. How many of y'all believe that? Never once did Jesus say, I'm the only one that can do this. 
He didn't say that. He never said, I'm the only one that can do this. He let them see it in demonstration. And then now go to John 14, 12. John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And what? And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father. And so, wait a minute, what's going on? The things that you see me do, you shall do also and even greater. Why? Because I'm going to the father. And when I go to the father, I'm sending the Holy Ghost. So you're going to have the Holy Ghost. You're going to have the supernatural power residing on the inside of you. Now, don't you think that would shape your expectations? Amen. Amen. Now, Matthew 10, go to Matthew 10, Matthew 10, 8. Jesus gives a command, heal the sick. See that? Amen. Now, does he say, I am the healer? He just tells them, heal the sick. Oh, well, I'm, you know, like, I'm not like a faith healer or nothing. Heal the sick, man. That's what I said. You're a follower of mine. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received. Now what? Oh, so they can't, you know, a lot of people, they can't cast out devils in church when the devil's in church. A lot of people's got devils in church. So they haven't freely received. So they can't cast out nothing. But that's not the intention. That's not what it was supposed to be like. God's power was supposed to be flowing freely through believers. Now, some of these theologians or some of these religious stiff necks, they'll teach this and they say, that was a command he gave his disciples. So do you think it was only for them? No. Well, we know that it was not only for them, but it was for all believers. Now go to Mark. We're going to close in a minute and I'm going to pray, pray for you. But go to uh, Mark 16, 15 through 18. Now, we got to see this stuff. This is just stuff that maybe we learned early in our walk with God. And but it's stuff that you get away from and stuff that, you know, you it just gets kind of uh, caught up in the whatever. But this is foundational truth, man. This is the stuff that you're supposed to be building your entire life on. And he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. See, that's what we're doing. We, we share. You share the good news of Jesus. You're sharing it everywhere you go. That's what preaching is. Heralding the truth. Amen. We're all commanded to do this. Next verse. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believes not is damned. So there are going to be pe plenty of people that reject it. But then there'll be plenty that receive it. Amen. We want them to receive Jesus in their heart and we want them to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on. We need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then also we want to lead them into a water baptism so that they can let the world know that they've been saved. Amen. The next verse. And these signs shall follow the disciples. What, what, and these signs shall follow them that go to the holiness church on 45th street. You see what I'm saying? All this stuff, man, these people have complicated this, but this is supposed to be our expectation. Like what if you are a new believer and somebody taught you, hey man, this is the signs that's going to follow you after you say yes, you believe Jesus, yes, these are the signs that's going to follow. What if somebody told you that and you say, oh really? What's going to be your expectation? You've been going out there, man, thinking like, well, here it is. <laughs> man, I'm excited about this. Because you wouldn't have any doubt until you listen to YouTube. Till you start listening to some people that didn't, you know, got their education from the cemetery. I mean, seminary. <laughs> right? They didn't. They didn't learn all faith away. 
Because there's no book that's going to tell you this but this book. See, God cannot be studied. He can only be revealed. Amen. And you have to be at that place where you're willing to experience him, but you're willing to let his power take you beyond the limitations of yourself. So, I, I don't know nothing about no healing, but that's what he said. So if that's what he said. I'm willing to engage. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They Now, that's the difference in his name. So he was here, but he said, I'm leaving. Don't worry about it. I'm sending the comforter. But now we got the Holy Ghost and we got the name. Amen. And so, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up service and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Meaning you can't be poisoned. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. What was he doing? Jesus was not even laying hands on everybody. He had such healing power flowing through him. They was just barely touching him getting healed. Well, he's letting them know that you go preach and the ones that believe this is the power they're going to have. And so that power is supposed to be flowing through all of us. I don't care if you just accepted Jesus last night. You got healing anointing on all on your hand. Come on, somebody, all in your body. You got healing virtue flowing all through you, even if you accepted Jesus last night. But you know what the devil has done? Change our expectations. People don't expect it no more. But I do. I'm expecting for healing. Amen. I expect, I pray, man, I'll be praying over people. I pray over you guys. I pray over people I don't know. But when I pray, I'm fully aware of the anointing that's in me. And I expect a manifestation. I'll show up in the hospital and I'll pray. And I, y'all know I'm coming packing. I got the oil. And I'm going to come up in there, man, and I'm going to pray. But I expect. But now... I could say, well, they didn't get their healing because they didn't believe. But I'm trying to go past that. The, the man on the mat didn't have no, didn't, nobody said nothing about his faith. I want folks getting healed because I got faith. Amen. Come on, come on, somebody. I want to lay hands on somebody and they get healed regardless if they don't believe. But because I believe yeah. my, the power of my faith is strong enough to bring transformation to somebody. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Amen. Then I'm going to lay hands on you. Amen. Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you for the power of your truth. We know that your word is true. It's still the same truth and it's still working for us. And we receive the power of it now. Maybe you're watching this right now. You don't know Jesus as Lord. We want to give you a chance to come into this family. This is the greatest family you could ever become a part of. But you've got to open your heart. Jesus stands at the door and he knocks. He says, if anybody would open, I'm going to come in and dine with them. Meaning he's going to stay with you, not for a short period, but for the rest of your life. But you got to let him in. Church, let's repeat this prayer so that anybody who hears this message, no matter where they are, they will know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me. Jesus, Jesus. please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day... I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap for the Lord. Amen.